Hey fam, what's up? It's April here. Today, we are starting the Empire of Storms reading vlog. Oh my gosh, finally. In true April fashion, I've actually already started. So I apologize, but I'll go through what I've read so far. I haven't read that much, I promise. If you've missed the previous vlogs in this series, then I will leave the playlist for them in the corner. But yeah, we are up to Empire of Storms, which I think is my second favorite in the series behind Queen of Shadows. But things could change with this reread, you never know. So yeah, I'm just going to be showing you my tabbing and annotation process while I'm reading it and we'll go through all of the crazy things that happen in this book together and then we will cry at the end. So yeah, let's get cracking! Okay, so here's the book that I've sadly spilt juice on but it's fine. <laughs> so this is the first of the Throne of Glass books that is not signed by Sarah J Mass, sadly. So here's the map. Wow, such map, wow. Okay, let's get into it. The first thing, I don't know why I didn't put a tab, so let's put one now. It is a quote that I liked that Eleanor says. She says, I would sooner die tomorrow than live for a thousand years with a coward's shame. So that is the first thing that I underlined in the book. So here we're learning about Gavin and Eleanor and what they did, and then, Part one, the firebringer. The next thing, again, I don't know why I didn't put a tab, but we're gonna put one now. So the next thing is a funny thing where Aelin's like to Adian, you could use a haircut. It's almost the same length as mine. It makes us look like we coordinated it. Adian snorted, stroking the dog's head. So what have we did? Aelin shrugged. If you want to start wearing magic out matching outfits as well, I'm in. I love them so much. And then this whole scene makes me angry because of one annoying man called Darrow. Wow, he is the worst, saying all these horrible things to Aelin, and oh wow, I just, oh, <laughs> he's the worst. And this line broke my heart, because it's Ren, and Aelin's like, I wish we had time to speak, time for me to explain, and he says, you're good at walking away from this kingdom. I don't see why now would be any different. And <laughs> I just want them to be friends, sad. And then on the next page, on page 72, where Aelin says, I promise you that no matter how far I go, no matter the cost, when you call for my aid, I will come. I promise you on my blood, on my family's name, that I will not turn my back on Terrison as you have turned your back on me. I promise you, Darrow, that when the day comes and you crawl for my help, I will put my kingdom before my pride and not kill you for this. I think the true punishment will be seeing me on the throne for the rest of your miserable life. Mic drop. And then I just put a little love heart when um, Manon and Abraxos come and save Dorian. And because I just love them so much and I just love the friendships that are, and the relationships that are about to form. <laughs> and he's like, hello, witchling. And she's like, hello, princeling. <laughs> uh. Then on page 132, when Rowan and Dorian are trying to get out of the castle, uh, Rowan says, I have known many kings in my life, Dorian Havilliard, and it was a rare man indeed who asked for help when he needed it, who would put aside pride. And then over here as well, I think I'm going to underline it. I don't know why I didn't underline it the first time, but I love... When Rowan says, you will find your way to Dorian. You'll find your way out. Again, just the friendships. <laughs> and then Erewhon just comes in. He's like, hey guys. Like, what the heck? <laughs> and this is where I'm up to. I'm on page 158. So I'm going to go keep reading and I will catch up with you in about 100 or so pages. And oh, we can talk. Okay, so it's been a couple of hours. I am now almost halfway done with Empire of Storms. I'm on page 305 of 689 and stuff is really starting to go down. Oh my gosh. So let's talk about what happened. So the first thing is on page 162 and 163 when Asterin is about to be executed. I just put 
sad underlines under everything when she's like bring my body back to the cabin and then how Manon is like she understood that she had not been born soulless she has she had not been born without a heart for they were both begging her not to swing that blade and then all of the 13 salute her like she's a witch queen and oh my gosh I'm so emo and then down here how Astrid was like bring our people home Manon and then she's like just kidding let's kill my grandmother instead and i'm like yes and as she is fighting her grandmother her grandmother reveals that she is the last living crotion queen she has crotion blood and yeah um what and then a few pages later i just underlined this that she said to abraxos let's make it a final stand worthy of song and then obviously uh manon is gravely injured and abraxos takes her to oakwald forest and i just put a little heart here because abraxos is just the sweetest i love him so much and then i tagged my first favorite scene of the book which is chapter 27 aelin pulls a selena basically her and lysandra are both aelin and he's like what the heck is happening <laughs> and then he realizes that selena is aelin and it's awesome and then when rolf says the talk of young idealists and dreamers and aelin says the world will be saved and remade by the dreamers role then on page 267 i underlined in blue because it's kind of sad when a lead is talking about how she couldn't remember the last time she'd been held or comforted or smiled at with any genuine love for who she was and then we find out that rolf is the heir to the mycenaean people oh my Gosh, I totally forgot about this. Ugh. And of course, in true Aelin fashion, she convinces him to ally with them. And now they are about to have a massive battle with the Valg. Such fun. But yeah, I feel like I didn't underline that much in the last like 150 pages that I read. But now things are about to go down and like this is from this point on is when stuff starts to like get really exciting so yeah i'm really excited but like thoughts a lead and lorcan's chapters are so boring to me i just like with all the carnival stuff like i just don't care can they just hurry up and get to aelin please but anyway that's it for now uh I'll catch up with you guys in a bit hey fam so it's actually a couple of days later got a bit distracted but since i spoke to you last i've read this much which doesn't look like much but this is 200 pages and i've got that much left so we're going to go through this bit and then i'm going to finish the book and then i'm going to come back for final thoughts i can't believe this is happening okay let's go okay chapter 34 they're about to get in the massive battle in skulls bay it is like one of the most epic scenes of the entire book i really should mark it up the top Where's my stuff? Like, even though it's not necessarily, like, my favourite favourites of scenes because it's kind of, like, sad and stuff, but I'm gonna, um, put a tab up the top anyway just because it's such a big scene of the book. So, um, the first thing I underlined was when Aelin was like, she did not give her fear an inch of space, which I feel like needs to be my life motto. And then down here... She was not a rebel princess, shattering enemy castles and killing kings. She was a force of nature. She was a calamity and a commander of immortal warriors of legend. And this whole chapter is honestly just like all about Lysandra. It is so scary. Like she gets so close to being killed. Like I honestly, the first time I read it, I was convinced that she was going to die. Like I just couldn't see a way out of it. But yeah, she makes it through and I barely underline anything. I think because I was just so into the story and I just, I didn't stop to underline anything. I was just, you know, <laughs> you know how it is if you've read this bit of the book, right? And Aelin has her body taken over by Deanna, which was crazy. And she almost killed everyone. Such fun. We love when that happens. Okay. The next thing I tabbed was page 346 when Rolf was explaining how he got the magic map and he, when he realized that the sacrifice he had made was his family. They died for him to get this magic map 
and yeah it's just a really sad moment because i forgot that that happened i just forget everything guys and then on page 350 i just underlined this because it's kind of cute i guess <laughs> when rowan says even when this world is a forgotten whisper of dust between the stars i will love you i just really like that line and i marked this scene with a love tab because hey yo it's the first sex scene. Uh, yeah, we're not gonna go into that. But, you know, it happened. Uh, it happened. So there's that. I put an important plot point tab because we find out that Marla Firebringer was Eleanor's mother. Yo, so many things that I forgot about. All right, part two, Fireheart. Uh, the next thing, now this is kind of weird to see because I usually only use pink to mark my favorite scenes up the top. But like, this was a favorite scene, but not like a favorite, favorite scene, if that makes sense. So I just changed the color because it's not like the top of the top best scenes, but it's a scene that I love. And that is when Manon wakes up from her death slumber and Aelin and the crew have rescued her and everything. But basically it's like the first talk between her and Dorian. And I just really love them. And I really love when they talk to each other. And then I underlined, um, when Manon is saying that the 13 are all she has left and she's like begging Dorian to help her find them. And then here, what page is this? 418, when Rowan tells Aelin, I see you, I see every part of you and I am not afraid. I feel like they just like see so deeply into each other's souls that they always know what the other one is thinking and they just always know what to say to each other to calm them down. Like Aelin's obviously struggling with her um, crazy powerful powers and how to control it. She thinks that she might hurt him and and then page 422. Oh look another sex scene <laughs> You know, I just I feel like I have to mark them so I did and that's that and then oh my gosh Manon and Dorian and um, They're kind of like flirting with each other a lot. They're kind of maybe about to do something and then he said I need to hear you say yes and I just wrote, we stand consent because yes. Then another um, plot twist kind of thing. When we find out that there's an Ilkin on the ship that has been impersonating Fenris and everyone is just shocked, including me, I was shocked, even though I've read this book twice, three times now. And then they have another battle because the Ilkin have figured out their location. Yikes. And the Ilkin also find Walken in a lead and he fights them off and then afterwards um, he says I made a promise to protect you I will not break it a lead I will always find you I promise and that's when I don't know I kind of start to ship them after this scene and I've kind of stopped thinking they're boring <laughs> and this is what really got me so a lead's on her period and it says when she awoke clean strips of linen for her cycle were next to the bed his own shirt, washed and dried overnight, now cut up for her to use as she would. Like that is a true love interest. Am I right, guys? You don't see that very often. And then on page 491, when Alid and Lorcan are like camping out in the marshes, and I tabbed this scene because this is their first kiss. And it's kind of really adorable. And then the rest of the team are also in the marshes. And here we find out that the Eye of Eleanor is also like an ancient symbol for the witches. And they're like, well, what, do, what the heck does this mean? And like Eleanor and the witches war, it was like a millennia apart. So like, how is this all related? And that's where I'm up to. I'm up to page 507, chapter 54. Lead and Lorcan are about to catch up to the team and yeah. Okay, I'm gonna go finish this book now. And <laughs> feelings, you know, you know, hey fam. So. Uh, it's actually the next day and I finished the book and I just had to take some time to myself to heal my soul basically. <laughs> I was way too emotional after finishing it to come back and talk to you so I guess we're doing it now. So yeah here's the finished product. Uh, I mean, what, what, what more can I say, you know? Let's just get into it. And then I'll come back at the end for some final thoughts. So on page 509, I underlined in blue when Dorian's talking to Manon about Saoirse. 
and it's emotional, so I underlined it. Then Lorcan and Elite finally catch up to the gang, and firstly, Gabriel and Fenris are like trying to kill Lorcan, and then Elite steps in and gets her arm shredded, and then the only way to like save Elite's arm and her life is to drop his shield around themselves, so he is basically sacrificing himself to save a lead and before he does that he says I wanted to go to Perant with you <laughs> and then my final favorite scene from the book is when Aelin and Adian and everyone are reunited with a lead because oh boy is it emotional the first words that Aelin says to her you look so much like your mother oh my gosh and then over here this is the part where I teared up, like I didn't have tears like running down my face but I had tears in my eyes when she was telling Alid um, her mother's final words to her. Oh my gosh, this part just got me, I don't know, but this whole reunion just, oh my gosh, I love reunions so much. And then down here I have something funny. Um, because Lorcan is being like really super protective of a lead and a lead's like you're making it worse and then Aelin's like we like to call it territorial male nonsense or territorial territorial fey bastard works just as nicely and then Ansel Ansel shows up with a whole freaking army and she's like who gave you permission to use my name in pit fights Aelin <laughs> I love them so much. See, it's stuff like this is why it's essential to read The Assassin's Blade. Because, like, you miss out on all these epic Easter eggs and epic reunions. And then we have this bit where Adian is telling Lysandra that he's been with both males and females. And he, it doesn't, you know, matter to him what gender they are. Attraction is attraction. And then here, I just tab this when we find out that Ansel actually tried to get Aelin out of Endovia. Oh my gosh, I totally forgot about that. She did that, yo. And then I marked this scene because it's Doreen's and Manon's, uh, sexy time scene. Such fun. And then basically, from here on out, we are just dropped with, like, plot twist after plot twist after plot twist. Like, that she's just dropping them. So the first one is um, after Manon and Aelin travel through the mirror and view the memories and stuff that are inside and they figure out that um, the eye of Eleanor was the lock all along for the keys. Let me also find out what a monumental idiot Eleanor was. It says that her dad was to wield the lock to seal the three word keys back into the gate and send us home before he shut the gate forever. Us and the Dark King. The lock was forged for us. Promised to us and you wasted it. Basically there are um like goddesses that are talking to Eleanor. One of them being her mother and yeah we find out that she uh she was an idiot basically. And we also find out the lock was forged by Eleanor her father and Rhiannon Crotion. And this is when um, we find out that Nehemia and Eleanor were like talking this whole time. Nehemia knew who Aelin was the entire time, knew everything. So Nehemia is basically like enlisted to help Aelin. And she's like, what's the price? And Ellen is like, you will not see Elway again. Another little Easter egg is that Manon's face and Rhiannon Crotion's face are exactly the same face. They have the same face. I don't know what that means, but they have the same face. Then over here, I just underlined where um, Brannon hid the final key in Marla's temple because I knew I would forget that. Brannon uh, takes his own life after setting all of these little clues up for Aelin in the future. And then, oh my gosh, plot twist, we find out that Aelin actually died in the river that night. She actually died. And Eleanor sacrificed um, her afterlife, like seeing her husband and children again, she sacrificed that to save Aelin. And then we also find out that what nameless is my price actually means, and that means that Aelin's life must be spent to forge the new lock and seal the gate. And then here I just underlined Lysandra's in her snow leopard form, and she like hugs Adian in snow leopard form, and it's so cute. And then, oh my gosh! Oh my gosh, 
Oh my gosh. The 13. They come back. They come back with Abraxos. Oh my gosh. I swear, if anything happens to Abraxos in the final book, I am rioting. And then we also find out that Lorcan was the one who summoned Maeve's fleet. He did it because he thought it was the only way to save a lead. What an idiot. And then Maeve. She severs the blood oath with Gabriel. So Gabriel is free. And she still traps Fenris, who we know is the, the one guy who just wishes that he was separated from Maeve. But no. And then we find out what we kind of already knew all along. That Aelin and Rowan are mates. And she, Maeve tricked Rowan and Lyria into believing they were mates. But they actually weren't. And he did it just to break Rowan. So that Rowan would take the blood oath to her. So that it would eventually lead Aelin to them. What a biatch. And then we have just a ton of sad stuff happening. Because Aelin has spent all of her power. She can't fight back against Maeve. And she knows that she's going to be taken. So she says, tell the others that I'm sorry. Tell Lysandra to remember her promise. And that I will never stop being grateful. Tell Adian. Tell him it is not his fault. And that I wish he'd been able to take the oath. But Terrison will look to him now. And the lines must not break. And tell Rowan that I'm sorry I lied. But tell him it was all borrowed time anyway. Even before today, I knew it was all just borrowed time. But I wish... We'd had more of it. Tell him he has to fight. He must save Terrison. And remember the vows he made to me. And tell him, tell him thank you for walking that dark path with me back to the light. Oh my gosh. And then I put an angry tab because Maeve gets her new follower, Ken. Is that how you say it? Karen. Uh, she gets him to whip her, which we all know. Oh my gosh. Oh my gosh. And she refuses to count the whips like Maeve ordered, so she's whipped like to the brink of death basically. And she's put in that iron box. Uh, yeah, shit. Then Maeve also strips Lorcan of the blood oath. Now he's left with absolutely nothing because he betrayed Elide and Maeve and now he has none of them. Haha. -ha. Then Rowan finally makes it to them and asks, where is my wife? So we find out that they were actually married so that he would end up being the queen's consort so he would have ruling over Terrison when she was gone and then we find out that Aelin actually slipped the word keys into Manon's pocket before she was taken and then Manon says afterwards Aelin Galathinius willingly handed over her freedom so an iron teeth witch could walk free we owe her a life debt and more than that it is time that we became better than our foremothers we are all children of this land. And she basically says that she's going to go and find the Crotian witches and try and gather them up in an army for Aelin. And then here I underlined this because I think this is what's going to happen. So basically it says here, she'd realized she was going to die, that the cost of sealing the gate, forging a new lock to do so was her life, her immortal life. So doesn't that just mean she'll lose her immortality and she'll just die at a normal age? right? <laughs> so she's not gonna die. And then we find out that behind everyone's backs, Aelin summoned Galen Ashriver, Crown Prince of Wendelin, and he brings his army as well. So now we've got Rolf's army, we've got Ansel's army, we've got Galen's army, and then we also find out that Ansel actually like ransacked Melisande and stole their army. <laughs> and then, and then, the silent assassins of the Red Desert come as well and their army so basically everyone's there and then basically they decide to all go their separate ways and lysandra takes the form of aelin so no one actually knows that she's been captured and so manon and dorian and the 13 decide to go off to find the final word key and to get the crotian witches and lysandra and adian they go back with Ansel and everyone to organize the armies. And then we also have Gabriel, Lorcan, Alid, and Rowan who are going off to find Aelin. And so they're all like saying their goodbyes. And then Rowan says to all of them, we will see you again, all of you. And it's just like such an emotional moment because we don't know if they're all gonna see each other again. Some people might die in this process. And it's just really stressful. And that is it. Oh my 
gosh. So yeah, final thoughts. Aelin's not going to die. She's just going to lose her immortality. That's my theory. And then Rowan will obviously probably give up his immortality as well. And then they'll live happily ever after. But I'm like, I'm really annoyed now because obviously after that, I want to jump straight into Kingdom of Ash. But no, I have to go back in time with uh, Tower of Dawn and suffer through that thing before getting to Kingdom of Ash, and it's annoying. It's annoying! Don't be annoyed! Okay, I'll try. Because, like, I'll be honest with you guys, Tower of Dawn is my least favorite book of the series. I think it's pretty boring until the last 100 pages or so, but obviously it's a book that I have to read before Kingdom of Ash. Like, even though I've read it before, I've just forgotten absolutely everything about it except for the big plot twist at the end. And, you know, I need to get reintroduced to the new characters because they'll obviously play a major part in the final book. So I'm kind of annoyed that I have to go back in time instead of just, like, fi finally finding out what happens next. But you gotta do what you gotta do, right? So anyway, that was the read with me vlog for Empire of Storms. I really hope you guys enjoyed it and I hope you stay tuned for the Tower of Dawn and Kingdom of Ash ones. I don't know what I'm gonna do when I finally get to Kingdom of Ash, guys. I don't know. I think I've heard one spoiler for Kingdom of Ash, but I don't know if it's true or not. And if it is true, I'm gonna riot. But um, I guess we'll talk about that when we get there. Okay, but that is it for this vlog. I hope you guys enjoyed it and I'll see you soon in the Tower of Dawn one. Goodbye.